you're lost. You're really lost. Trailblazers with a long and winding idea. They really were visionaries. To build a rock road from coast to coast. Hey, this is way better than a muddy road. The mud, the blood, the sweat, and the gears. It's a little bit of a life and death endeavor. Just seemed impossible. How they created the ultimate road trip, the Lincoln Highway. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. What could be more American than a road trip? But at the dawn of the automotive age, from sea to shining sea was just a lyric in a song. Yeah, you could sing it, but you couldn't very well drive it. America was beautiful, but its highways were a pitiful mess. <laughs> Think mud and paved roads, if there were any, were in cities. And cars were making the whole world smaller. At the turn of the century, there were a few thousand people who were starting to buy automobiles, generally people who had a little bit more money, who could afford this newfangled, loud, horseless carriage. Some of the most sporting drivers debated, was it possible to cross America by car? San Francisco, California, 1903, in a bar at the University Club. A group of early car geeks offered 50 bucks to any man brave enough to try. To think that a car could cross the country was really uh, an impossibility. Dr. Horatio Nelson Jackson accepted the challenge. Honestly, it's, it's a little bit of a life and death endeavor. You didn't know if you were going to break down. You didn't know if you were going to get stuck in the mud. Right from the starting line, Dr. Jackson faced a series of roadblocks. It wasn't just popping the car and going across the country. It was an excursion. Along the way, he picked up a bull terrier dog, and they had to find goggles for the dog because of the dust that was, that was coming up. It took 63 days, but when Jackson and crew arrived in New York City, they were welcomed with fanfare. Horatio Jackson's trip in 1903 really allowed people to see the possibility that a car could cross the United States. It's the equivalent today of flying to Mars. It just seemed impossible. Clearly, America's roadways needed a major makeover. An audacious entrepreneur stepped up, Carl Fisher. Carl Fisher was sometimes called Crazy Carl because of all the stunts and big ideas that he would pull off. He was passionate about automobiles. He wanted to see automobiles everywhere. He wanted good roads to ride. Fisher proposed a true coast-to-coast -coast rock highway. Just the idea of a highway was outlandish enough, but paving it in rock was really Carl Fisher's big vision. To help fund his big vision, Fisher turned to the king of cars. They reached out to Henry Ford knowing that he was the big name in automobiles. The Model T is what really opened up American roads. Till then, uh, the cars were expensive and they were owned by mostly wealthy people. But Ford wasn't keen on privately funded roads. He thought that road building was just too big of a project to raise private funds for. Crazy Carl was not ready to give up. Carl Fisher is one of the original four founders of the Indianapolis 500, so he uh, knew a lot of people in the automobile um, industry. This was a good idea for business, that uh, the best way to sell more cars and parts for cars was to build highways for those cars to drive on. Even with the support of his business buddies, Fisher couldn't muster the private funds he needed. Their original goal was to raise $10 million in 1912. And that's astronomical in, in today's standards. But he did get the enthusiastic support of Packard president Henry Joy. Henry Joy was a Detroit native. He led a takeover of the Packard car company and turned it into a luxury car brand. Although he was a wealthy man and never needed to leave his desk, at the same time, uh, he was quite an adventurer. Fisher was the bright idea guy, but Packard 
President Henry B. Joy. He is the implementer. Fisher handed Joy the keys, and Joy hit the gas pedal. Joy understood that private funding would not be enough. To gain public support, the project needed a patriotic identity. Henry's father was Abraham Lincoln's boss uh, at the Illinois Central Railroad. And Henry grew up with stories told firsthand from his father about Abraham Lincoln. And he told Carl Fisher, this is a great idea, but let's not call it the Coast to Coast Rock Highway. Let's make this as a memorial to Abraham Lincoln. Henry Joy became the president and head cheerleader for the Lincoln Highway Association. They saw it as a patriotic duty, a way to honor President Lincoln, a way to help bind the country with the Lincoln Highway that would bring together uh, all parts of the country. Choosing the name was a snap. Choosing the route was a slog. When word got out that they were pathfinding a route that would go from New York to San Francisco, lots of towns tried to convince uh, the Lincoln Highway Association to put their uh, road through their town. Joy's first priority was keep it simple. Well, Henry Joy especially promoted the idea that it should be the most direct road from coast to coast. The proposed Lincoln Highway would be a patchwork of improved roads and brand new ones, stretching from Times Square to San Francisco. When it was finally connected, it would cover more than 3,300 miles across 12 states. It would be the largest memorial to a human being ever. To pull it off, this national effort would require local muscle all the way. The Lincoln Highway Association would get local people involved and they had each state have an organization, and then within that state, there would be what they called local councils. So really thousands and thousands of people at the time got involved. But all those different crews had the same problem to solve. How do you bring roads from mud to rock? Anything better than dirt would be an improvement. So they were still at the experimental age of what would be a better road. At the end of the 19th century, the introduction of Portland cement was a game changer in civil engineering. The idea of paving a road in concrete at the time was really revolutionary too. People couldn't believe that you could pour liquid concrete today and drive on it tomorrow. To spur investment, Henry Joy needed to make America cry out for concrete. So he created the ultimate tease, the seedling mile. They would take a particularly muddy section of the Lincoln Highway, and they raised enough money to put in a demonstrator mile to show people, hey, this is what an improved road could really be like. Joy planted the first seedling mile in Malta, Illinois. Anyone riding along would be bumping in the dirt or uh, in the mud with a uh, lumpy surface, and suddenly you hit concrete. And there was no better sales pitch than to drive a mile of concrete and say, this is what we need across the country. Illinois drivers got a one-mile taste test, and they wanted more. Joy was a master PR man. He planted concrete seedling miles in Nebraska, Iowa, Ohio, and Indiana. And soon, America was hooked on the stuff. There were other places along the Lincoln Highway where people realized, hey, this is way better than a muddy, muddy road. But it wouldn't be a smooth ride yet. They'd actually put rations on the men for water and put a guard around the water truck 